Welcome back YouTube. This is going to be part two of the palladium refining video. And in this part two, I've got the uh, solution actor evaporated down to 150 ml now, which is the uh, concentration I need to go ahead and do this next step. What I'm going to do is make a concentrated solution of ammonium chloride and add that to the palladium solution to precipitate out any platinum that might be in there. Then I'll filter out any platinum salts that, that precipitates from the ammonium chloride. And then I'll take that solution that's got the platinum filtered out of it and bubble chlorine gas through it. What I'm going to do there is I've got some swimming pool chlorine tablets here. It's called chloral iso cyanuric acid tablets. I bought these at Walmart or Lowe's, one of them places that sells swimming pool supplies. And I'll grind it, I'll take a tablet and grind it up in here in my little mortar and pestle. Then I'll add it to this flask over here as my gas generator. I've got a uh, uh, an addition funnel that's vented to prevent it from uh, pressurizing in there and I'll put uh, some hydrochloric acid in there and then slowly drip the hydrochloric acid on the uh, ground up chlorine tablets. I've got a little tube here that I'll uh, I put a, uh, a tip on it, pipette, a glass pipette inserted into this tube and I'll put that on the uh, arm of the flask over here and then I'll bubble the chlorine gas that was produced in the gas generator through the uh, palladium solution and form a palladium salt that's soluble in, in ammonia and then once I get that I'll filter that out put it in a separate beaker and then add uh, just regular 10 percent household ammonia you can buy at the grocery store and a stirring a hot plate and uh, stir that up and dissolve the palladium salt in the ammonia once we get that done I'm gonna filter that solution to get out any junk any solids and then I'll take that filtrate uh, the dissolved palladium that's dissolved in ammonia and I'll uh, add hydrochloric acid to reacidify it and what we'll get is a uh, bright yellow canary yellow precipitate of uh, pure palladium salt then I'll take that palladium salt and I'll put it in a fused quartz dish and we'll uh, burn it over a uh, hot plate and form some pure palladium metal sponge and we're going to do all that for you right now the solution has been on the uh, heat there all night long. It was way up here above probably about 350 ml. And I've got it down to around uh, 125 ml, which is a little bit low. I might have to rehydrate it with a little hydrochloric acid. I don't want the solution to be too concentrated because if it is, when I go to add the ammonium chloride, it'll form a uh, precipitate that I don't want. It's not soluble in uh, ammonia. So I'm going to fill this back up to 150 ml with some hydrochloric acid. So I've got uh, the 7.5 grams of palladium dissolved in 150 ml of liquid. That'll be 20 ml per gram. Okay, I just took this off the heat. I overshot with the evaporation a little bit there. It's, I need to be at 150 ml per uh, for this whole experiment here so I'm going to rehydrate it with just a little bit of hydrochloric acid here and get it up to uh, just under 150 ml I think that'll get me to where I need to be all right that's about just under 150 ml now of solution with 7.5 grams of uh, palladium dissolved in it now what I'm going to do is uh, make up a uh, solution, a concentrated solution of ammonium chloride here. I'm going to put about 50 ml of uh, distilled water in a beaker. Add a spoonful of uh, ammonium chloride. A little bit more maybe. Go ahead and stir that up. Until that dissolves, make a nice saturated solution here. I've got the ammonium chloride solution here. It's saturated. I've got a little bit left on the bottom that won't dissolve. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add this saturated solution of ammonium chloride to my palladium solution here to precipitate out any platinum that might be 
in solution with the palladium. Now I'm going to tell you, I don't expect to precipitate out any platinum. should just be palladium in here. Now it's important to uh, realize that the uh, palladium or the ammonium chloride is required in this palladium solution. Whether or not I suspect I have platinum or not, the ammonium chloride addition, if I, my, memory serve, my memory serves me correctly, that ammonium chloride has to be added for this next step. Either way, and I am getting some precipitate form in there. It does not look like uh, what I'm after. I've only added a few ml of the uh, ammonium chloride and I've got some kind of precipitate forming on the bottom there. I'm not quite sure what that is. I do not think it's platinum. It's probably some form of palladium. I'm going to add a little bit more of this uh, ammonium chloride. about 6-8 ml of that uh, concentrated ammonium chloride solution and you can see down there I've got a little bit of uh, precipitate that's formed not a whole lot it uh, kind of looks like it's going away it's a yellowish color orangish color I don't know if that's uh, platinum or what that is but it's real fine grained. It's not the uh, thick PD2 salt that I want to try to avoid. Before I show this next segment of video, I want to go back in time three or four years ago. I tried this experiment and I over concentrated the palladium solution. I had about 5 ml per gram concentration. And when I added that ammonium chloride solution, I got this thick crystalline like precipitate called PD2 which is undesirable in this reaction. Okay, this is some instructions that I downloaded off of uh, the goldrefiningforum.com from a previous, previous experiment that I did with some uh, palladium. It says, what you have to critically evaluate is concentrating it, the solution, to around 20 ml per gram. Let it cool and see if there's any orange or yellow fine grain PT salt appearing within the thick and dense PD2 salt. Well, I don't see any thick, dense PD2 salt in here, so I don't think I've got that. So I think what this is is some fine grained, fine grained platinum in the bottom of that beaker. Anyway, it goes on to say, if yes, you're good to go for filtration of the PT salt. If orange yellow PT salt is appearing with the usual suspect thick PD2, which I don't think I have, then you would have to dilute it with a bit of 50 50 distilled water and hydrochloric acid and give it some heat until the thick PD2 salt disappears. Then go ahead and filter out the platinum. Well, I don't have any thick PD2 salt in here. So I'm thinking that's just platinum in there. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, set up a filter and filter that out of there and proceed with the experiment. Before I go any further, I'd like to uh, point out where these instructions came from. There's a user on the uh, goldrefiningforum.com. His name was Ray Ovius, and he was very helpful to me back when I was doing these uh, platinum group metal experiments, trying to refine platinum and palladium. He uh, reached out and uh, helped me, uh, basically took me by the hand and helped me step by step, guiding me and showing me exactly what needed to be done to be successful with these uh, platinum group metal experiments. So, Ray Ovius, thank you very much. I just want to extend that thank you to you if you're watching the video. Thank you very much. I've set up a little filter here. Let me 
go ahead and filter the palladium solution and get that uh, yellow precipitate that's on the bottom of the beaker into the filter so we can proceed to the next step. operation here. I just wanted to show you what this uh, precipitate looks like down here. It's a really fine grained yellow precipitate. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm thinking that's gonna be platinum. I never would have thought that platinum would have been in the uh, palladium salts that were derived from uh, dimethylgloxine. I thought it would just be pure palladium with no platinum. We're getting down to the uh, precipitate now. And I'm going to conclude that that's probably some platinum that precipitated out of that palladium solution, which really baffled and surprised me. If that is ammonium hexachloroplatinate, then I can't use distilled water to rinse it out of the beaker because ammonium hexachloroplatinate is soluble in water. It'll go back into solution and contaminate the uh, palladium. What I can use, I've got some hydrochloric acid here. Uh, the ammonium hexachloroplatinate is not soluble in hydrochloric acid, so I'm going to use some hydrochloric acid to rinse it out of the uh, beaker. Here I use a very minimal amount of hydrochloric acid to rinse that uh, hexachloroplatinate down into the filter. Uh, the reason I do this, I don't want to use too much of that hydrochloric acid to over dilute my uh, palladium solution down in the uh, beaker there. Here's what I believe is my uh, platinum salt in the filter. Down here is my palladium solution. I would love to be able to rinse this platinum salt out free of uh, palladium, but uh, what I'm going to do to avoid over diluting my solution in here, I'm going to go ahead and rinse this uh, platinum solution with some hydrochloric acid into another container here. much different than gold and silver. There's so many more critical uh, variables when you're refining platinum group metals. Uh, variables such as uh, pH levels, concentration levels, liquid levels, temperature. There's so many different factors that affect the uh, outcome of your refining of the platinum group metals that just don't apply to the uh, gold and silver refining. Two different worlds. The hydrochloric acid rinse is nearly complete here. I'd be tempted to add this solution, which is going to be mostly palladium, back to my main solution. But I'm not going to do that because, for one thing, that platinum is going to try to want to go back into solution with that hydrochloric acid the longer it stays on there. And then probably intermix with the palladium that's in here. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add this to my stock pot. And I'm going to add this to my stock pot. scoop a little bit of this uh, precipitate out with the pipette, clean pipette. It's got a little bit of water in it. We'll put it down in this spot plate. Stir it around. It should go back into solution if it's uh, ammonium hexachloroplatinate. Now what I'll do is I'll take a little piece of filter paper here, dip it in to the solution. I'm going to add some stannous chloride to it, and we'll see what happens here. 
then as you can see, I get an orange stain, which tells me that this, this material in here is ammonium hexachloroplatinate based on this test. So it is in fact platinum. That's a relief, man. I didn't know where I was going with this. This is the first time that I've gotten this far with this refining. So I've got some platinum in the filter. And then I got my uh, palladium solution down here in this little beaker that's got uh, ammonium uh, chloride mixed in with it. We're ready to go to the next uh, phase of the uh, process, which is to bubble some chlorine gas through this uh, palladium solution. We'll get set up to do that right now. Okay, it's the following day, and I'm going to go ahead and get set up to uh, prepare the gas generator to bubble chlorine gas through our uh, palladium solution here. These are the uh, tablets that I'll be using to make the uh, chlorine gas. It's called trichloro cyanuric acid. Aquachem swimming pool chlorine tablets. some of that uh, trichloro isocyanuric acid to my gas generating flask here. I've got my uh, crushed up trichloro isocyanuric acid in the uh, generating flask here. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to set this off to the side and I'm going to uh, assemble the gas generator now. Here I add some uh, water to the crushed up chlorine tablet to form a slurry in the gas generator bottle there. do is uh, charge the addition funnel with about 200 ml of hydrochloric acid here. get started I'm going to go ahead and transfer my uh, palladium solution that has ammonium chloride in it and the platinum removed into this 600 ml beaker. Well in this shot I uh, set up to turn that gas generator on and then reached up and turned the camera off instead of on so I missed that part of the video. But you know what, I forgot to turn the camera on. But what I'm doing here is I've started the chlorine gas generator, dripping hydrochloric acid from the addition funnel down into the slurry that I made with water and uh, chopped up chlorine tablet. It's going through this tube here. And uh, I can see the precipitate forming now in my uh, palladium solution here. We'll just let this bubble for a while.
in this shot, I was on the phone talking with one of the most knowledgeable persons on the planet with respect to Platinum Group Metals refining. He said to add ice to it, so I put some ice on there to keep it cool. I've been bubbling the uh, chlorine through this for about uh, 10 or 15 minutes now. And uh, I've added some ice down here to make sure to keep everything cool. I guess the uh, more cool this solution is, the better this uh, reaction happens. My gas generator is still cranking out some chlorine gas. I'm going to shut the uh, gas off here, or the uh, flow of hydrochloric acid. I've got the uh, palladium solution down here. I put some ice around it to make sure it stayed cool. It's been bubbling gas through it now for about 15-20 uh, minutes. What I'm going to do now is uh, I've got a filter set up here. Moisten it with a little hydrochloric acid. So it stays down in the uh, filter. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this up and I'm going to filter out our uh, precipitate so that we can dissolve it in some ammonia. Notice how dark the uh, filtrate is that's going down into that flask. I'm uh, fairly certain that that filtrate should be a lot lighter than that. It tells me that there's still some uh, palladium in that solution. All right, I've got most of the precipitate out of the beaker now, down into the uh, funnel there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this uh, beaker back in the ice bath over here add this solution that filtered out back into the beaker and uh, try to bubble some more gas see if we can get some more uh, precipitate to form please realize that this is the first time that I've ever done this uh, that I've gotten this far with it made this brick red precipitate that's uh, going to be dissolved in ammonia so you're watching me learn for the very first time everything that I'm doing here is uh, my very first attempt at this kind of nerve-wracking I already missed one good segment forgot to turn the camera on so anyway here we go with that process got some 15% ammonium chloride solution here. It's made by dissolving uh, 15 grams of uh, ammonium chloride in 100 ml of water. I'm going to use that to rinse the, uh, rinse the salt. The reason I'm using 15% ammonium chloride water to rinse this salt out is because I'm concerned that if I just use regular water or hydrochloric acid that that salt will want to try to go back into solution so that's why I'm using the ammonium chloride water to do this rinse I'm going to transfer the funnel to this smaller flask here and then I'm going to pour this solution back into my beaker over here Here I'm using common sense to deduct that that solution is just too dark and still contains some palladium so I want to try to uh, further extract it with some uh, chlorine. And now what I'll do is put the uh, start the flow of acid back down into my gas generator here. Just drip some in a little at a time. And I'm going to put the, put the tube back into the solution see if I can get some more of that uh, some more of that palladium salt to precipitate out. Hydrochloric 
acid level and my gas generator is getting low there so I'm going to add about another 100 ml of uh, hydrochloric acid to it. precipitate farming so I concluded that I didn't add enough ammonium chloride earlier when I precipitated the platinum. Doesn't seem to be any more uh, salt precipitating out of that solution so I'm going to add some uh, concentrated ammonium chloride here. I don't know if this is the right thing to do or not but I'm going to go ahead and add some more in there and see what happens. Something's coming out. Something's precipitating there. our palladium salt that we're going to put in ammonia now and dissolve. It's been rinsed with a little bit of 15% ammonium chloride. I've got this uh, solution over here. Some kind of precipitates formed. I don't know what that is. I don't know if I did that right or not, but I put more ammonium chloride in there. I pull that gas generating tube out and just set it off to the side. And then we'll go ahead and uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with this. I'll try to filter it out, I guess. Maybe keep it separate from this uh, other stuff. This is my good salt. I know this is good to go. This stuff here, I don't know what it is. What I'll do is uh, filter it out separately later on and try to dissolve that by itself in some ammonia. See how that works. But for now, we're going to get set up to dissolve this uh, lady of salt in ammonia. Okay, now I'm going to transfer this uh, filter here that's got the uh, palladium salt into my beaker here. If I can make this happen without creating a problem. stir bar in here covered up and what we're going to do now is take a walk outside by the way I just like to point out any of this stuff that's got ammonium chloride in it I said I was going to put it in my stock pot but I'm not it's all going to go into a different container because if I put it in my stock pot then I get a bunch of ammonia in there and that's something I want to try to avoid so now we're going to move outside to do this uh, dissolving with the ammonia. I hate ammonia, it's very corrosive. It's ruined some of my uh, equipment in the past. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna set this on top of the uh, heater. I'm not gonna apply any heat, but I'm gonna use a stir bar. I've got some 10% uh, uh, regular old grocery store ammonia. Yeah, the reason I moved out here is because this ammonia is so corrosive. I'm scared of what it'll do to my motor and my fume hood. But here we go. I'm going to add uh, add some 10% ammonia to our uh, palladium salt here. See if we can get this stuff to dissolve. I don't know how much this is going to take. It's my first time doing this. Turn the stir bar on. It's only, only been about a minute or so since I added that last dosage of ammonia. 
I'm gonna add a little bit more and then I'm just gonna let this stuff stir out here. Okay, I got it up to about the, uh, what, 300 ml level there. Or just under 300 ml. Just let this stir and see if I can get that stuff to go into solution with that ammonia. Alrighty, while I'm waiting for the uh, ammonia to dissolve, that, uh, that other stuff I got out there, I got this stuff, it's got a little bit more precipitate in it, so I'm going to try to filter this out and see what we can do with this, maybe this will increase my yield, I don't know what this is going to be, this is kind of like an experiment here. I've almost got all of this... Uh, solution this precipitate filtered out here I don't know what this is going to be this is uh, the stuff that I put back on the bubbler and added some more ammonium chloride I the curiosity got to me so I figured I'd go ahead and filter this out and try to dissolve it in ammonia as well and that's what we're going to do here I'm going to use some of the ammonium chloride solution to rinse this out Alright, I got all the solution filtered off of that uh, precipitate. Go ahead and transfer that into this other beaker here. It's marked number two. Let's see if I can get that out of there and into this beaker. Judging by the color of this solution down here, I think I might have got some more of the palladium out in here. And what we're going to do now is take this out and try to dissolve it with some ammonia. All right, let's take this out to the stir stir out there. Well, while we pass it up, I might as well show you my silver cell here. Give you a peek inside there. This thing runs 24/7. There's some pure silver crystal growing in there. This is the impure silver shot that gets dissolved. Up here is my power supply. Got it set on 3.5 volts, 0.9 amps. All right, back to the palladium. Let's take this outside. Check on our other batch that we already have dissolving in ammonia. And looky there, looky there. It's a blue aqua green color. I'm gonna take that off of the uh, stir. Well, first let me uh, let me stop the stir stir bar there. I'm gonna try to get it out with a uh, magnet here. Where's it at? There it is. Try to get that out. I'm going to use that in the other batch here. Just drop it in. Put this up on the stir, stir pad there. I'm going to add some ammonia, just like we did with the last batch. Let's see if we can get this to go into solution. About 150 ml or so. Turn the stir bar on and let her rip. Alright, this other batch here has completely gone into solution there in the ammonia. I'm going to take this back in and we'll filter that junk out of there and then try to precipitate the uh, yellow 
palladium salt out of this. All right, next step here is to take our uh, palladium solution that we've got dissolved in ammonia. And filter all the junk out of it here. Alright, this is just 10 minutes later and this stuff is uh, pretty much all gone into solution here. I'm going to go ahead and take this in and get ready to filter it as well. My second beaker, mark number two, with that other uh, salt in it. I'm going to go ahead and make a command decision here. Go ahead and filter it right in with this. It, it went into solution. I hope I don't ruin the experiment right here, but here goes nothing. I'm just going to go ahead and filter this right into the same beaker. Okay, both of these solutions have been filtered now. The uh, liquid down here is ammonia with pure palladium dissolved into it. And uh, it's a blue color. What I'm going to do now is add some hydrochloric acid to this and reacidify it and see if I can get that palladium salt to precipitate out of it. got some 31% uh, hydrochloric acid that's what's in this container right here and out of that plastic container I just showed what I'm going to do is go ahead and add some acid to this solution now and let's see what happens here some in here slowly there it goes I see a yellow color starting to appear there see that yellow color starting to appear that means we're reacidifying this solution it should start kicking that precipitate out that real pretty yellow there it goes there it goes look at that man very nice very nice and who gets to do this this is awesome that's our pure palladium salt that's unbelievable man that is so cool Now the refiner I talked to earlier said better not overshoot with the hydrochloric acid or we'll start putting the stuff back in solution. But that's our pure palladium salt. I'm going to stop right there. I don't know how much acid I added. I wasn't keeping track. But uh, as you can see, that stuff just looks gorgeous. Beautiful. The beaker's a little bit warm. So that was definitely an exothermic reaction. Get a quick temperature reading here. It's 115 degrees Fahrenheit, 46 degrees Celsius. And here's what our uh, precipitate looks like. It's formed a little bit of a layer in between there. I don't know what that's all about. This is so cool. 
I wish you could see it in person. The color is just gorgeous. Okay, I'm gonna save this filter paper here with the other palladium junk that I got in that jar. And we'll process this separately. There's still some palladium in there, maybe a gram or so. So I'm gonna keep all that, process it separately. We're at the uh, next step here, which is to get our uh, palladium salt in this filter here so we can burn it. This uh, fluffy yellow precipitate is not, I don't believe it's soluble in water, so I can rinse this out and rinse the uh, stuff in the funnel with some distilled water here, cold distilled water. Okay, what we're looking at here is all the waste and byproducts that I uh, produced during this uh, both of these videos, parts one and part two. These are all the papers uh, that I used to wipe up the overflow that I had. Plus the uh, filters are in there from where I filtered out the uh, ammonia dissolved uh, palladium salt. That's in the paper there too. What I'll do is probably process this, process this with some aqua regia. This is the uh, waste from the uh, first video, it's got a piece of zinc in it. There's some palladium down at the bottom of the container there, and I'll recover that. This is the platinum that we got out of the uh, out of the uh, palladium solution when we added the ammonium chloride. That's some platinum that precipitated out. Over here, we've got all the uh, waste uh, liquids from all the containers. I just uh, Use some regular uh, distilled water and rinsed everything down into this one container. And then here finally is our final product, which is the uh, palladium salt. And what we're going to do now is go ahead and put this in a fused quartz dish. I'm going to burn off the uh, compounds and leave behind the pure palladium uh, metal sponge. We'll do that right now. What I have here is a fused quartz dish. And uh, my professional refiner friend said that the best way to, uh, to uh, render this palladium from this salt would be to use formic acid. But I don't have any formic acid. Maybe I'll do another video and, uh, and demonstrate how to do that. But for this one, I'm just going to use the old-fashioned uh, calcining method where I uh, put the... Uh, Put the salt, it's dried out pretty good. I left it sitting there in the funnel for a, quite a while. We'll put this salt in the uh, in the fused quartz dish here. If we can get it out in there. It's got a little bit of liquid with it. Come on out. There we go. That's got a lot of liquid in there. I have to get rid of some of that before I uh, start start uh, the burning process because if I don't, it'll start spattering all over the place. I'm going to use a small disposable pipe bed here to try to get some of this liquid out of this uh, material here. let this uh, liquid evaporate off of there. Just check the temperature here. Oh my goodness, it's up to 187.5, 87.5. Uh, 
96.4 Celsius. Turn the heat down a little bit here. Been on there about 10 minutes now. Temperature's at 170 Fahrenheit. 76.8 C. Just let that uh, slowly evaporate off until it gets dry and then I'll crank the heat up on it. We'll start burning off the uh, compounds to leave behind the metal. The dish with the uh, palladium salt's been on there now for about uh, 45 minutes. Pretty much dried out. Temperature's 176, 80 degrees C. Uh, salt, the palladium salt in that dish there started making some popping noises. So I turned the temperature down just a little bit to uh, go ahead and let it cool off a little bit. There's evidently some more moisture in there that needs to evaporate off before we go going high with the heat. The heat's really cranking. It's been on here for about an hour and a half now. 265C, 509 Fahrenheit, 265 centigrade. When calcining this material, it's important not to get that heat too high or What'll happen is it'll melt and then it'll vaporize off and go right up the stack and you'll lose metal. It's got to be done slowly. Try to help this out a little bit by putting a torch on it on the top there to burn some of that paper away. centigrade 622 Fahrenheit okay the uh, salt has been calcining now on here for about two hours and I can see down in there I still got some unburnt material there so we're going to have to keep going with this process until we get everything burnt. The dish has been on there for two and a half hours now. I've got it at uh, 525 Fahrenheit, 274 degrees C. Now there's 286 to 292 C, 547 to 558 Fahrenheit. Those temperatures are enough to have uh, calcined all our material. I don't see anything else smoking. So everything's been driven off here. These are the ashes of the paper that uh, from the filter paper. I should have used an ashless filter paper, but that's all I had. So I've got ashes in with my palladium metal sponge. The only real way to get this uh, 
get a yield on this is to melt it up in the crucible. I meant to weigh the uh, fused quartz dish and put the weight on the side of it before I started this and I forgot to do that. Then well, we could just uh, let this cool down and then weigh it with the material in it and subtract the two and get a weight on the uh, actual palladium sponge. But that's the palladium sponge. It's done. Okay, here's the palladium sponge. I've let it cool down for about 20 minutes or so. And uh, I figured that's rather anticlimactic to see a bunch of ashes there in a dish. So I'm going to try to, uh, I'm going to put, put it in this crucible right here and uh, try to melt it up into a button. So we got some metal to show for our efforts. I've wet a couple of pieces of filter paper here and I'm going to go ahead and try to wipe out the residue out of the dish so we can include that with our melt. Get all of it out that we can. Here I'm in uncharted territory. I've never melted palladium before. I'm adding a bunch of borax to help uh, hold the uh, powder in the crucible so the flame doesn't blow it out of there. I've got that special uh, thick crucible to retain the heat as I uh, melt the palladium sponge here. I'm using an oxy acetylene torch with a cutting head on it. Uh, it's the hottest flame on the planet, I've been told, at uh, over 6,000 degrees Fahrenheit. You really can't see what's uh, going on here, but the uh, metal's starting to melt and form a button down in the middle of that melt dish. And in the next segment, you'll hear me uh, give out a little yell of joy because it forms up into a nice button for me. Wow. <laughs> Man, what an awesome, rewarding experience that was. I didn't know if I was going to be able to melt that. This is the first time I've ever melted palladium. Uh, it's got a real neat mirror finish on it. Bottom's kind of frosty looking. But let's go ahead and put it on a scale over here and see how much we weigh. 3.5. 3.5 grams of pure palladium. Pure palladium button. Well, what an awesome experience. You might have heard me yelp out when I was uh, melting that stuff and it formed up into a button. I'd never melted palladium before. I didn't know if it was going to work or not, man, but it came out real good. And I'm real pleased with that. But well, what I'll probably do is uh, list this on my eBay store and sell it. It's probably three nines fine, 
Okay, I'm a little closer now to being able to refine my stock pot. I've done some platinum, I've done some palladium, and uh, that's what I was trying to get geared up for is to refine that stock pot and be able to get those platinum group metals out of there. So that'll be coming up here soon. I feel a little bit more confident now that I was able to get the metals out of both of those uh, refinings of the platinum and the palladium. And uh, this will conclude part two of the uh, video. This thing is just awesome looking. It's got a neat little mirror finish to it. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Oh, I'd like to say uh, thank you to my uh, subscribers and my viewers. I put out that uh, little plea for uh, some financial help. I'm not asking for charity. I'm just asking for folks to go to my uh, eBay website. It's called Baffless. And I've got some really nice jewelry items on there for sale. And so it'll help me out. I'll make a little bit of money uh, by selling those pieces of jewelry. So it'll help me out and help me to keep going with these experiments and making these videos. So thanks. Uh, I got a nice response from that uh, last post and woke up the next morning and bang, three of the items had sold. They'd sit there for months. And I was just so grateful for that. Thank you for, folks for, uh, for stepping up and, uh, and helping me out with that respect. Okay. This will conclude part two of the Palladium Refining video. I'm going to go home and list this, and we'll put this up for sale. Thanks for watching.